Did you see that? A little bit different than the regular intro, isn't it? Because this isn't home box office, this is Tutvid box office, and that's exactly the kind of intro that we're gonna take a look at creating in Premiere Pro in this tutorial. My name is Nathaniel Dodson, I'm from tutvid.com. We're gonna talk about how to create this HBO style intro in uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, and if you want all the source files like the, the static and the slide, the TBO slide with entertainment uh, and the sound, I sort of scraped out some HBO intro sound, Use the link down in the description. You can head over to the site. You can download the resources and follow exactly along with this tutorial. And speaking of tutorial, let's jump in and check it out right now. All right, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. And like I mentioned, if you uh, if you jump over to the website, you can download this WAV file and the two logo files that were uh, saved out as PNGs, the .png from Photoshop, as well as some TV static. You can find this and download it from YouTube kind of anywhere, but I'm just throwing it in there just so you don't have to think about it. Uh, one important thing here, if I jump over to Photoshop, you can see I just created uh, this logo. And if I check out the image size, it's just the size of the video that I'm gonna be working with, 2560 by 1440. It is over a transparent background and very, very important here. I just made the logo solid 50% gray. That's going to allow me to knock it out if I want over in Premiere Pro using some blend modes. I just took some free text. The font is called uh, Marbold, I believe. I'll, I'll make sure I link that down in the description to the video as well. Marbold, it's a free font and it looks pretty HBO-ish. So I just went TBO, added the little circle to the middle, added entertainment to the bottom. Now, here's the important part of this. When I saved this out as a PNG, I saved one PNG without the text on the bottom and one PNG with that entertainment text. It's just gonna really help facilitate what we wanna do over in Premiere, just make it a little bit easier for us. And I know this is a Premiere Pro tutorial, but if you're unfamiliar with how to save something out as a PNG from Photoshop, you would just go like File, uh, Export, and choose Save for Web Legacy. And then up here in the Save for Web dialog box, right up here, you can just choose PNG 24, and you'll see the white background is gonna become transparent. Boom, you would choose to save it. Save it wherever you want on your hard drive. All right, we're done with Photoshop. I'm gonna quit Photoshop just to prove to you how done with it I am. Over here in Premiere Pro, we can finally for real, get started over in Premiere Pro, we are going to create a new uh, sequence. So I can do new sequence here, or I can come down here into the new item and just choose new sequence, great. Uh, and I'm gonna go right to settings, and I'm gonna change my frame size to 2560 by 1440, and 2997 for frames per second is perfect. Everything else can remain the same. We can name this whatever we want. I'm gonna actually call this TBO hyphen intro, just so I know what it is, hit okay. There's our sequence. All right, let's drag our stuff here into Premiere. So I'm just gonna grab all of these files, boom. I'm gonna drag them down here to my project bin. And there we go, we've got our audio, we've got both of our PNGs and our static. I'm gonna drag the static out onto my timeline. And you can see here, it's because they look clip mismatch warning and the clip doesn't match the sequence settings. I'm gonna say, keep the existing settings. Um, I'm not worried about that. We're gonna have to blow our static up a little bit. That's fine. I'm gonna zoom in here to my static using the plus button on my keyboard because I, I really wanna see what I'm working on here. And the first thing we wanna do is just make sure this matches the frame uh, size. So we'll right click on this clip and we'll just choose right here, scale to frame size. Bing, we're up to frame size, looking good. Let's now come over here and choose the new item button and choose to create a color mat. And I'm gonna hit okay. And we'll just fill this, just fill it with something that is gonna be, you know, you can see. I'm just gonna go with this kind of light bluish purple and I'm gonna name it mask. There we go, mask. Just for organization's sake, I'm gonna drag it up next to the TV clip in my project bin. And I'm gonna drag this color mat out and place it above the TV static. And then I'm gonna hover over the front edge and I'm gonna drag the clip out to make it as long as my TV static. Now what we wanna do is begin animating this mask or this color mat that we just created. I want to move my playhead to the exact two second mark. So I'm just gonna select this playhead position here and I'm gonna type out 200. That's gonna move me right to two seconds on my timeline. Let's take a quick break here. We've only been working on this for a couple minutes, but I wanna let you guys know, if you're enjoying this, you like what you see, well, subscribe to the channel so you can check out all the Premiere Pro, After Effects, video editing tutorials, you name it, on the channel. You'll never miss any past, present, or future Premiere Pro tutorials if you hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Let's jump in and check out the rest of this video. Next, I'm gonna select the mask or the color mat, and I'm gonna make sure I open my effect controls panel. And over here, I'm gonna uncheck uniform scale. We wanna have access to both scale height and scale width. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set scale height to five, and I'm gonna set scale width to zero, effectively making that color mat disappear. But what we wanna do is add a color frame, a color frame, a keyframe, I should say, 
over here in effect controls for scale width. This is going to, as you just saw in that little tooltip, toggle the animation. It drops a keyframe. We want to move down our timeline four frames. So hit the right arrow key, one, two, three, four. Move down simply four frames. The timing is kind of important here because we're going to try to sync it up with that HBO intro sounder. And right here, we're going to change the width from zero to 125. So we're going to make it 12.5% wider on either side of our frame. So it extends beyond the frame here. We want it to really shoot out over the course of these four frames. And you can see here that the animation is automatically created for us in Premiere. I'm going to click here up in this timeline. I'm going to use my plus uh, buttons to zoom in to make sure that I'm working exactly on the keyframes. And you can see I'm not entirely lined up on the keyframe. So I'm going to hit this next keyframe button. There we go. Now we're lined up perfectly. And we want to add a keyframe for scale height right here. So the idea is first this little mask is going to shoot out from the center. And then we can begin animating the height value of it. So we'll go scale height. And we're going to move down the timeline 10 frames. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and tap the right arrow key once, twice. That's 10 frames. That moves uh, my playhead five frames at a time. And here we're going to set scale height to 125. And you're going to see, boom, our entire frame is filled with that purpley blue color now. Let's go ahead now and use this animation that we just created as our mask. Now, just a quick side note, you could just select all of these keyframes. You could right click on them and choose like, you know, ease them all out just to give it a little, a little bit of variation to the animation. Uh, it's not going to make that much of a difference, but if you're picky and you want to, you want to kind of mess around with the exact way the animation is uh, shown, uh, you can do an ease in or an ease out or anything like that. Now we need to make this the mask because we want this animation to be what reveals the static, just like you would see in that HBO intro. So select the, the static video layer down here. We're going to go effects and we're going to type into the search bar here. We're going to search for an effect called track matte key. There it is under the keying and video effects. Track matte key. We'll drag and drop that on our TV static layer. And we're going to choose to set the matte from none to video two. Video two is the layer on which our mask is sitting. So here we go. If we just play through this real quick, you're going to see zip. Just like that, we get this nice open where the static shows. Two seconds of darkness, and then the static shows. Very cool. We want to select our mask layer once more, and we want to get ourselves aligned with that very last keyframe. I can just zoom in on it by selecting the timeline up here and then using my plus uh, icon. We want to get our playhead exactly over that, so we'll just use the previous keyframe button right here. I accidentally hit it twice. Let's go next keyframe. There we go. Let me just pull this out so we can see what's going on. There it is. And I want to move down my timeline five more frames, so I'm going to hold down Shift and tap the right arrow key. And at this point, we want to drag our first graphic. So I'm going to come back to my project bin. I'm going to take the TBO logo one PNG, the one without the text on the bottom, drag it out and place it right there. We'll drag this now so it runs the rest of the static clip just like that. And we want to add a couple of effects to this. So I'm going to just select that logo PNG and I'm going to go back to my effects here. I'm going to cancel out the track because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to look for a drop shadow. So I'm going to type in drop shadow. There it is, video effects, perspective, drop shadow. I'm going to drag that onto my logo. I'm going to change the color here to white. I want this to be almost more of a highlight than an actual shadow. I'm going to set the opacity to 100. I'm going to set the direction to 180. I want to change the distance to zero because I want this to come, you know, from directly underneath the uh, the lettering. And I want to set the softness to 250 pixels. And you'll see that more than a shadow or a highlight, really, I guess you can consider it a glow that will be behind these letters. That's perfect. I'm going to collapse that first drop shadow. Now we're going to drag a second drop shadow out and drop it on that same graphic. And you can see when I drag the second drop shadow out, it kind of like knocks the uh, the graphic out of whack. We'll, we'll correct for that in just a second. But let's focus on creating a, a drop shadow here. We are going to create a shadow that is black. It's going to be 100% opaque, so 100% opacity. We're going to set the direction here to negative 45 because we actually want this to pop like out of the top and the left sides of our text. We'll set the distance here to 10. And now to correct for the position change, we'll just close up that drop shadow. I'm going to come up here to position, and I'm going to change the X value to 1155. That's going to correct it side to side. And then the Y, I'm going to change it to 595. That's going to correct this top to bottom. Now those obviously are exact for this size frame and the exact, you know, the exact settings I'm using with my drop shadow. You might have to tweak and adjust on your own to get yours just perfect. I just know that's what it is for this particular project. I want now to change the uh, blend mode. So I'm going to come down here under opacity and we have this blend mode option. We're going to change this from normal to overlay. Now overlay is going to knock out the gray and just leave us with a little kind of shadowy, glowy text outline. And if I absolutely wanted here, I could also 
do, let's find brightness. There's brightness contrast. I'll drag that out. I could just make this a little darker. Maybe we could make it like negative 10 or 20. We could try to darken that up a little bit. I don't know if I, I like that as much. Maybe I'll just go negative 10. I'll make it very subtle, something like that, just to make it pop a little bit more. I'm going to close up the brightness contrast. All that's been applied to this one graphic. Now, I'm going to tap my up arrow key, which is going to take me to the very beginning of the clip. Well, I need to make sure I target that track there. There we go. Uh, it takes me right to the beginning of that clip. And I want to move 35 frames inward, so down the timeline. So I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to tap my right arrow key. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times five, 35. Boom. We're 35 frames in. Now, you could animate the opacity uh, the opacity parameter, if you will, over here in the effect controls, or we could do something a little bit more simple. We'll, we'll do an opacity uh, animation later. We could just use a video transition, go to Dissolve, and choose Cross Dissolve, drag it onto the beginning of the clip, and then just zoom in on this a little bit. We can drag the end of that cross dissolve out to about 35 frames in, and we'll watch here as that text just fades right in, as you would expect uh, from this style intro. I'm gonna move over here. I'm gonna collapse this stuff because I like to keep my panels kind of neat. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. This is the first phase of the intro. So we're gonna select these clips. I'm gonna right click on them and I'm gonna to choose to nest them. And I'm gonna name these one hyphen phase. So this first nested clip is gonna be called one hyphen phase. All right, let's move a little bit down the timeline here so we got some space to work. Don't worry about the first phase there. We can delete that, and you can see over here, here's one phase. It is actually saved like it's an additional clip over in our project bin. I'm not going to worry about that, though. We're going to create a new color mat. So I'm going to go color mat. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to make sure this is filled with solid black, and I'm just going to name it background. There we go, and there it is. Uh, what we'll do is we'll drag this out now onto our timeline, just kind of drop it anywhere, anywhere after the one phase. We're working with some clean tracks here. I'm going to drag the static out again and I'm going to line it up with the very beginning of that color mat that I just created and I'm going to drag the color mat out so it's as long as my static uh, my static clip so you can see now this black background is underneath the static I'll right click on the static just choose to scale that up to the frame size once more and it's time to drag out the second version of the logo so we'll drag this out and this we also want to be just as long as our static and our background tracks beneath. So you can see there is our text and it has the entertainment tagline beneath it. Now let's get right down to business. We're going to mask our static to this gray logo. So we need to find that track mat key again. So let's go track, there it is, track mat key. We place this on the static layer and we say, hey look, use the V3 track as your mask. So now we have static within our text logo. That's looking good. And we want to uh, add a brightness contrast effect to the static layer. So we'll go back, we'll find brightness, brightness contrast. We'll drag this out and drop it on the static layer. And I think what I'll do here is I will increase the brightness quite a bit. Maybe I'll bump it up to like 70 and I will reduce contrast yeah, probably like negative 30. We want it to really wash wash the contrast out here for this part of the effect. I'm going to collapse track mat key and collapse brightness contrast, and I'm going to cancel that out here in the effects panel. And I want to add an effect called a bevel alpha. So I'm just going to search for bevel, and down here under perspective, we have bevel alpha. And if I drag that and drop it on the static, uh, the static layer, it's going to bevel the edges here that are visible through this mask. So it really works with what we've got going on. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the edge thickness to 5. I'm going to change the light angle to 135. We can leave the light color at white. You could make it more of a light gray if you want. I'm going to try changing the light intensity to something like 0.6. I think that's just going to be a good, sharp outline there on the bottom. You see how we're really getting that strong white stroke. The problem is it's really making these letters down here look like trash. So I want to mask them out. So I'm going to grab the pen tool over here for bevel alpha, and I'm just going to draw a very rough shape around the TBO logo up here. What that's going to do is it's going to constrain this bevel alpha just within that shape I drew. And you can see here the entertainment letters, they're not affected. Great. Let's collapse the bevel alpha. I'm going to cancel out bevel alpha down here in my effects panel. And we're going to look for an effect. Uh, well, you know what? Let's go with another drop shadow. I think drop shadow will work fine here. Let's go ahead and drag that drop shadow out. Great. And this is really where things are going to get a little interesting. We're going to keep the drop shadow color as black, even though we're over a black background. We're going to set the opacity to 100%. I'm going to change the direction to negative 30, and I'm going to change the distance to 15. I'm going to leave the softness at zero. I want this to be very harsh edged. I'm going to collapse that drop shadow. Now we're going to add a second drop shadow. This is how we get kind of that, that interesting outline uh, that the HBO style intro has. And we may need to adjust. You saw how our, our intro graphic bumped a little bit. We may need to adjust this a little bit, but we'll see here. When when we, when we line the two phases up. We're going to change the shadow color, in this case, from black to solid white, just bright, bright white. 
I'm going to change the opacity. I'm actually going to reduce it just a little bit, maybe down to like 40. I'll stick with 45%. I'm going to set it to negative 45 in terms of degrees. You're going to see it's going to pop those lines out up there. Very cool. It's almost exactly what we want. The distance maybe is a little too far. You can really play with the distance, though. It seems like on some shows they have the, the distance very far away, and others it's a little closer. I'm going to go with like a distance of two, but you can put the distance far, far away. Uh, softness is going to remain at zero, and... The effect looks really bad on these little letters. So once more, let's grab the pen tool here. Just draw a nice mask shape here above our top logo, just like so. And we only are going to have those lines to the top and to the left of our big logo, not the letters beneath. Let's collapse that drop shadow. And now that we've got this going on, you can see that's all it is, is just the static showing through this text frame we've created. Let's select these three clips, right click, and nest these together. So there it is, nest, and we're going to call this two hyphen phase. So this is sort of the second phase of the intro. So where does the second phase of the intro begin? Well, it begins, I found, about four seconds into uh, the intro. So we're going to come back to our time. We'll type in 400, and there it is. We're at four seconds. So I'll drag phase two up and over, just like that, and place it right above phase one. So we're going to go from phase one to phase two, just like that. Well, it looks like the text is lining up all right. We'll see when we fade it together and see how well it really lines up. And if we have to adjust it, we can always adjust it. So now to create the fade, how these, these clips will transition one from the other, or one to the other, I should say, uh, let's select this uh, two-phase clip. Uh, let's just turn on the toggle here. So you toggle the track targeting. Let's target that track. I'm going to hit the up arrow key to take me back to the very beginning of the two-phase clip. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Whoop, I accidentally hit delete. We're going to zoom in a little bit there. I'm going to select the two-phase clip. And what I'm going to do is move 25 frames down the timeline. So that's holding down shift and nudging with the right arrow key. One, two, three, four, five. There's 25 frames. And I want to change the opacity here. But I don't, I don't really need to change the opacity yet. I just need to set a keyframe. Now, animation is already toggled on. So let's just come over over here and choose this add slash remove keyframe. By the way, I know animation is toggled on because the little stopwatch is blue. See these, the animation is toggled off. It's just boring and gray. Here it's all blue and lit up. So all we need to do is come over here and hit add or remove keyframe. Then we'll move back down the timeline a little bit and we're going to set opacity to zero. All right, it's going to automatically create that keyframe. I'm going to select now because I want to use my plus key to zoom in on this timeline and I just want to drag this keyframe all the way to the very beginning of the clip. So at the very beginning of the clip, this will begin at 0% opacity. Whoop, let's make sure we're actually at the beginning of the clip. There we are, just like that. And now if I just quickly play through this, you can see that we'll just have that effect where it blends beautifully from that gray glowing text to the static text over a black background with that little drop shadow, gray, white style outline and edging. And at this point, if you've done everything that I've done and you followed along with my timing, there's a reason I've tried to stay so perfect to the frames because at this point, if we drag in our TBO audio and we drop it in place, we can even trim our clips up here on the end, right? If I just zoom in and if I grab my razor tool right here and I just say, you know what, zip that clip there, zip that clip there, grab my arrow tool, drag a selection over those two bits, delete them off. And now if I just play through this, well, you can see it's a little CPU intensive and with everything running, it doesn't want to work. So let me do this. We're going to set an in point by hitting the letter I. We'll go all the way to the end of our clips and we'll hit the letter O to set an out point. And I will go sequence. I'll choose to render this into out and it's going to render up really quickly for us and we'll be able to preview it all over again. But this time it won't be all herky jerky because it'll be fully rendered. Ah, won't you look at that? Just perfect. I'm going to use the hotkey Alt X, that'd be Option X on the Mac to get rid of my in and out points. And that's really it for this one. So I hope you've enjoyed it for creating the HBO, or should I say TBO, it's the Tutvid box office video intro effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. I really hope you enjoyed it for all the effects, the drop shadows, the bevel alphas, and the opacity keyframes and animating and everything in between. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds in tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.